with the word was out that perhaps the position of Mineral Bay would, would be available, I kind of did an upside to the poll of my old. What about the community? Asking the community, what would you like to have in a mayor? Whether he be an interim mayor or whether he be a full time mayor. And I was surprised to hear, but in a way, wasn't a surprise. I mean, they were looking for the standard things of leadership and honesty and team player and be able to manage budgets, work with people. So I look at all of that and I say, well, look, uh, to myself, I said, self, you may be able to, to do all those things. So I look at my, my credentials. In 36 years with the city of Memphis, the last two as deputy chief, managing my part of a, about a $93 million budget, my part was a little less than $30 million. And I helped prepare a budget and manage that uh, budget, and I'll knock on wood, brought in a circus for a few years, which I was very proud of the staff that I had. Which brings me to the fact of people. During that time, I had 400 people that were under my command. So I felt like I had dressed administrative needs, and I had dressed people needs. So I look at what else does it take to be a person that would represent a suburban community such as a viable community village? And that's to be able to meet with the media. Well, I had plenty of exposure there because as Deputy Chief of Special Operations, I handled a couple of instances, the Shadow Street case, where two officers were taken hostage, and St. Jude, where four people were taken hostage. Both drew national attention, so I had no problem with handling the media. Because if you're truthful with them and give them time, you don't play games with them, you can find out they can be an ally and bring a lot of good publicity. Unfortunately, we haven't been the product of that here lately, but that can change. And I think I can make that change. Uh, after leaving the police department, I left it simply to go in business with my mentor, my uh, my wife, Jenny, and for 12 years we ran a successful business here at Millington called Jenny's Gift Shop. So I feel like I have the business experience that it would take to operate as interim mayor. While we had the gift shop, I invested in a bank. Unbeknownst to me, it became a trouble bank, Bank of Friendship, and I ended up having to serve as interim president at that bank, or they were going to close it, the FDIC and the Tennessee Bank were going to close it, as they did the Bank of Alamo. For a little over a year, I served as interim president of that <coughs> bank, which had two branches, the Tiffany Bank and Trust of Covington and the Bank of Lexington. So I gained experience there, business experience. So I don't mean to minimize the job of mayor, but I feel like I have the qualifications to step into this job running. And I feel like that uh, the most pressing things here now that your budget process has got to be started for the city. I understand your fiscal year is the 30th, so that needs to be uh, at least started. We've got ongoing projects, so we can't just make this here in the city. We need to go on and get forward with those projects. <coughs> but I guess there's three things that are really pressing to me that, that, that I would have to address early on if selected. And that's to regain employee confidence. I think our employees here are going to make this city go. And if we can't regain the confidence that there's leadership on board that can guide, lead, and direct, then we're in trouble. And then secondly, I think we need to regain the confidence of our citizenship, our community, so that there's pride and dignity. And say, hey, I'm proud, Billy. This is the best kept secret in Tennessee. I'm proud to walk the streets of Billy. It's a wonderful place to live. And unless we have teamwork, a 
board of aldermen and a mayor that is willing to sit out and disagree in an agreeable manner, compromise, try to work and not have a private agenda, have a militant agenda, then we're not going to survive. Gentlemen, I can bring it to you. There are people here that can work and do equally as well as I feel like I can. But they won't do any better. And they won't work any harder. So I'll uh, leave you with the thought that I think there's one more thing that we need to do. Is we need to prepare so this incoming person this fall who will do the full-time job, I think we need to do everything in our power to make a smooth transition. And I can guarantee you that I would work very hard at that end. But I have no desire for a full-time position. As a matter of fact, I'd probably uh, be looking at a divorce <laughs> if, if I entertain it. And, and I'll be perfectly candid with you. When, when I decided to to try this, that she was the first person I went to. And I, I sat down with her and had a long talk. What would you want in someone to lead this city? And what would you expect? And I was pleasantly surprised that her thought processes were a lot like mine. Not a rubber stamp, but, but uh, a lot like mine. Honesty, teamwork. Dignity, education, and while we're talking about education, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to attend a number of, of management schools, very fortunate because of my career. I spent time at the University of Virginia, the FBI Academy, Secret Service Academy. I went to the University of Memphis. Uh, I, I've been very lucky in that I have received a lot of wonderful training. And I guess that's probably what's prompted me to apply for this. I'd like to give back to the community what I've been blessed to get from the community. So with that gentleman, I have nothing else. I'd entertain any